Two ball clubs, one division. We'll see the Kansas City Royals on the road as they play against the Chicago White Sox. It's the MLB on 2K Sports. This is Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. Hi, everybody. Gary Thorne, John Crux, Steve Phillips, a month into the season. Just moments from now, Gil Mesh is going to bring his stuff to try and baffle these hitters. They love being here, and they're ready to cheer. Over 40,000 in their seats. We're going to see Mark Burley make the start in today's game. Phoebe gets going here against Kansas City. What do you think we're going to see from him? Well, a little mismatch in this one right here. One of the best lefties in the game against the lineup that does struck. And we'll have a chance now to see how the Royals line up presented by. And here's Juan Pierre. White Sox lost the last one. They had quite a bit of steam coming into that one. They'd won four in a row. And Burley gets it by called strike and the count will go to 0 and 1. And uh, that was a stinging loss in the last one got beat by five. Yeah when you're giving up that many runs you, you're not giving your offense a chance to come back and that's what happened in this one. And Tian with the catch. And now's a good time to take a brief look how the White Sox stack up defensively. Scouting these fielders Steve. Well they're confident with Alex Rios out there just a solid all around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. And here's David DeJesus. Looking back to last season, it was a, a 259 average against the White Sox at U.S. Cellular Field. Right. Burley's pitch taken for a strike, 101. Well, Mark Burley again established himself as the ace of the Chicago White Sox staff. You talk about a guy who doesn't throw hard, but he keeps the ball in play. He makes his fielders work behind him, and that's why everyone loves playing with him. Swing and a line drive. And there it is. That's our first hit of the ball game. And for Mark Burley, he has turned into a real horse. This is a guy who not only pitches well and often, but deep into games. Well, he sure does. He's a godsend to the bullpen because every time he goes out there, you know he's going to give you seven, eight, possibly even nine innings every start. Strike started off the at bat 0 1. Well, this guy's changeup is so good that a lot of hitters almost forget about his fastball, but it's that speed differential that makes it so effective. That ball swung on, hit Rios to field it, and that gets down. Butler on first. Now Let's take a look where the Kansas, the Kansas City, City Royals Royal. rank right now There's in the American hitter, League. Fifth in stolen bases, twelfth in batting average, and they have not hit with runners in scoring position. They've really got to look at their approach at the plate. They look like they're pressing a little bit too much. Swings and misses at the curve, 0 and 1. Well, that's just a great pitch right there. I mean, that's the hardest pitch for a hitter to try to stay back on. That's why he was out in front of that one. Here's the pitch. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. That's two gone. Well, he keeps the runners right where they are. So now he's just an out away from working his way out of danger and keeping this game tied. Diaspo at the plate. Just one hit, 14 career at bats against Burrow. Can't get him to chase it. That's low, ball one. This cut fastball is a very effective pitch for this guy because it allows him to set up all of his other pitches. Cutter just off the black and he falls behind 2 and 0. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. So no runs, two hits, and they strand two. And the White Sox, their first chance has come. And the starter for Kansas City. As he gets into this White Sox lineup, Steve, a little strategy. Well, with Gil Mesh out on the mound, the hitters have to know he's got a, an assortment of pitches that he can throw at any time in the count. Nothing's overpowering, although his fastball can touch 95. It doesn't have great movement. You have to sit on the fastball, adjust to the secondary pitches, and force him to throw strikes. 0-1, oh, oh. Mesh kicks and delivers. Here's a curveball that bounces to the plate. The 1-1. One, one. Got the bat on that. Anderson's there. That's one down. Presented by Pepsi. We'll show you the lineup. Ozzie Guillen's got going. Thoughts, John? Anybody stand up? Well, when you watch Johnny Damon, you don't want to emulate his swing. It's not one of the prettiest swings you ever see in baseball, but it is one of the more effective ones. He's got power. He can hit for average. And when he gets on base, he's a threat to steal. 
And the uh, first pitch was a strike. Got him at 0-1 right now. Line towards second. From his knees, he got him. What a play! This is an acrobatic play worth another look to get that out. Well, look how quickly he gets to his knees. That's body control. Terrific effort. And it's Paul Canerco now. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Hit up the middle. And with two down, they've got a man on board. And a runner on, Carlos Quinton will hit. He's number one in runs scored in the league. Mesh with a delivery. There's a swing, line drive, center field. And it falls in, hitting streak continues. Now's a good time to take a moment to check out the Royals. Here's their defense. So, Steve, any individual standout? Jason Kendall's always been known for his ability to call the game. His relationship with the pitching staff has been critical to his success and his team's success. Strike one. Mesh got him to swing 0-1. Pitchers that have a curveball like this guy have great success at the major league level because you don't have to throw it for a strike. As long as you're ahead in the count, it's a pitch that the hitter will chase out of the zone. And that one swung on and missed by Gordon Beck. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. Still scoreless in Chicago. Avila set the plate. Burley with a delivery. Here's a swing, a soft liner to the left side. And that's in left field, base hit. So Alex Gordon will come up. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average, first in batting average with runners in scoring position. And they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody else right now. You limit the run scored, you give yourself a chance to win. He deals. And he lays one down here. Burley over to first for out number one. Outstanding job of deadening the ball right there. He catches the ball on the bat making it come off very softly and in exactly the spot where he wanted to. Good sack bunt. And we've got Anderson batting. Well, back in July of last year, Mark Burley threw that perfect game for the Chicago White Sox. And I tell you what, kids, if you're watching a guy and you can't throw 95-96, take a good look at Mark Burley. He'll teach you how to pitch. Swing and a foul straight back. For Mark Burley, if any pitcher deserved to have a no-hitter, you gotta you gotta give it to him because he pitches games. Hit in the air to left center. And it drops the base hit. Kansas City gets a shot at it right now. And maybe he wanted to waste that pitch. It just didn't get far enough away or up high. Well, it just it was still caught a little too much of the plate, and the batter took advantage of it. Good focus at the plate. And he watches a cut fastball to start the at bat for strike one. He's hit 304 lifetime against the White Sox. 0 and 1. Burley kicks and delivers. 0 1. Good hard cutter in for a call strike. Even with the late movement on the cut fastball, you don't want to throw it up in the zone because a hitter can fight it off and muscle it over the infielders. Swung and a ground ball to third. So Kendall is retired. The run scores. And here are the standings in the Central Division as we move into May. Brought to you by State Farm. It's the White Sox in first. Twins in the second spot. In third place, it's the Royals. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Another year in the middle of the pack for the Kansas City Royals. And that pretty much is as anticipated coming into the season. Ball. Good patience as Juan Pierre lets that one go by for a ball. It's even. Now he's good coming off a three hit game the night before and gives you some confidence coming into today's game. Burley with a delivery and that swung on and hit Rios and it's through credit Pierre a single. 
And Anderson comes in. For the Kansas City Openings Royals. for this lineup Fielding, offensively. Don't give it to them now because they David are hot. He takes this one-two pitch down in the zone. He's able to go down and get it. Get a good part of the bat on the ball and pick up the base hit. That's a tough pitch to hit when you're behind in the count. You just want contact, and he got it. And he leaves that one alone. David DeJesus evens the count. A 266 hitter last year against the White Sox. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. And that's out number three. Good start offensively. We get the first two runs of the game coming here in the second. The Royals are in front two to nothing. Do up six seven. And Alex Rios up. Center fielder. Number 51. Alex Rios. Swung on, hit sharply to first. That's going to bring up A.J. Przinski. Now State Farm brings you the leaderboard for the highest on base percentage in the league. A couple of best grinders in the game at the plate right here. Guys who foul off the tough pitches, battle, find ways to get on base. They'll get a base hit. They'll take a walk, do anything necessary to get on base. He's the league leader in ribbies. Runner on first base. Nobody out. Mesh with a delivery. And he offers at the circle change and misses 0 and 1. There's a swing and a smash. It's off the wall on a hop. The throw. And is Rios heading home. And he will score. Great base running. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Number 25, Mark Tan. Now the pitcher left us one over the middle part of the plate right where the hitter can make contact good piece of hitting boy with a run scoring there that's a pretty pretty fat pitch in an RBI situation keep the rally going slider swung on and missed 0 and 1 nothing yet in four ABs against mesh and that's a strike Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. I got to be feeling good today. Picked up a couple hits in the game last night. Taps this one foul off to the left. Swing and a miss on the breaker. One down. Well, this is where you want to go with two strikes on the hitter. You want to go down out of the zone. He swings through it. Couldn't make contact with that one. So Johnny Damon thinks RBI. Johnny Damon was a key cog for the New York Yankees in 2009. Helped leading them to a world championship. You look at the at bats, he got on base, he hit home runs, he drove in runs, he scored runs. He's a complete offensive player. That one misses, it gets away from the catcher. Center. This is a one hopper off the wall. There's the throw. And Pierzynski comes in. Boy, the continuation here of this offense is called big time momentum. Number 24. Johnny Damon had to answer his critics last season in New York. A lot of people thought maybe his career was already done. Well, it wasn't. No, it was. And the, and the fact that he's he's not a great outfielder anymore, he doesn't possess a good throwing arm, but the fact is, when you look at left fielders in, in, in the American League, he put up some of the best numbers of any of them as far as average home runs and RBIs. And Posednik's batting. Steve, a chance swung on, lined over the first baseman's head. That one, a one-hopper off the wall. And there it is. That's the time-breaking run. They're ahead. Well, you're talking about making a beeline for the back, Steve. That's what he does here, and he does it with his head. Well, that's a good piece of hitting. This guy's a dirt player. He's willing to go in head first and give everything he has and just beats the throw. Yeah. 
One out with a runner at second. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Down the left field line. And another. Wow, that hitting coach is smiling. They score the run. Hitting? Well, they say it's contagious. It is contagious here in this ball game because they can't be stopped. Paul Fernando. What more do you need to see? Now you have to question his confidence. Giving up three straight hits. Not much going right out there at this point. And it's Paul Canerco now. So the direction here, Steve, for this lineup. Just liner towards the hole. And Butler gloves that one. And he looks that runner back to second base. Take a look at the teams who are leading the way in the home run department, courtesy of State Farm. The White Sox, number one. The Red Sox, second. The Blue Jays, third. Fourth, the Angels. And for the Orioles, they are fifth. Well, there's a lot of power in this lineup, Gary. And I tell you, it's a nightmare for any pitcher. You know, usually you have one or two guys that can take you out of the ballpark. They have a plethora of guys who can do damage. If one doesn't get you, the next one will. Well hit towards the middle. And it gets through. Great swing today. Now two hits. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. That ball is well struck. Good piece of hitting. The infield playing back. Had a little more ability to cover some ground, but he was able to get a bite. And Beckham's in the box. Line down the right field line, but a foul ball. Oh, and one mesh kicks and delivers. Strike two. Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. A great change up right there. You see how far out in front of it he is? Got him, and they're able to avert any more damage. Side retired. They pound out six hits in the inning and push across four runs as well. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. Third inning. All lit up here at U.S. Cellular Field on this beautiful night for a game. Billy Butler. And it's Billy Butler to lead it off. Now, if you didn't get a chance to see the game last night, you missed the fact he drove in three runs in that ball game. First pitch is on the way to Butler. Lined up the middle. I come able to pull that one. And fans, there's more baseball coming this Friday. It'll be Alex Rodriguez and the New York Yankees. They take their game to Boston to challenge the Red Sox at Fenway. All gets going at 7 p.m. Eastern. Looking forward to that one, Gary. That's going to be some kind of ball game to tune into. Base is empty with one away. On the ground to second. Beckham. Out and that will retire on Keel. Uh, Gary, this guy makes it look easy and retires another one at first. Two outs, space is empty. First pitch. Swing, soft liner towards left center. That gets down. That'll put him on the tying run up. And that will bring Mike Avilas to the plate. Boy, after two outs, they finally got a man on board right here in this inning. So let's see if they can get back-to-back -back hits going and maybe get some momentum. Burley with a delivery. Watches the changeup go by for strike one. The hitter saw a fastball. The pitcher threw changeup. Not a good combination for the hitter. Last speed pitch is in there, and he falls behind 0-2. Ball. Catcher can't control it. Oh, and he's going to try for second. Ball. Swing, and that's going to be hit behind the plate. 
Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. And that is in there. The tying run is on base. That'll bring Alex Gordon to bat. Now this pitch just cuts right over the heart of the plate. The hitter handled it perfectly. Mm. That's one of those where you've uh, you've given in by making a bad pitch and, and really made it much easier for the hitter. Yeah, he's better than that. Bear down. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. His lifetime average, 261 off Mark Burley. And Przinski calls for the pitch. Good patience. Alex Gordon letting that one go by. It evens the count. He watches one at the knees, and it's one and two. When you can hit your spot with that kind of movement down and into the hitter, you're way ahead of the game. Good patience. Alex Gordon letting that one go by. It evens the count. Burley with a delivery. Swing, hot shot. Burley. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. And heading to the dugout, Mark Burley. And it'll be the one. A look at the manager, Ozzie Guillen. Last inning, that pitching gave up nothing. That's what he wants to see. Now looking for the offense to try and expand the lead. And Alex Rios up. And he's in the top ten in the league and runs. And the pitch from Mesh low that time for a ball. Uh, one thing they know they can count on in this lineup is his bat. He has been so consistently good. 1-0 pitch, a slider in there. What a one. This is where you want to go with the breaking ball to the outside corner. Paint the black, get the call. The hitter gave up on it. He got the pitch he wanted. The 1 2 on its way. He strikes out Alex Rios in a swing and a miss. At 80 miles per hour, that's pretty good movement right there. It's going to be Przinski. Well, A.J. Przinski put together a pretty solid season for the White Sox in 2009, hitting 300. He doesn't strike out. Swing and lined up the middle, and he gets it down. He's two for two now. State Farm takes a look at the highest batting average over the last 10 games. We look at these hitters. They're really the guys with the most versatility, the ability to drive the ball to left field, to right field, and hit the fastball, the curveball, the slider. There's really not a pitch these guys can't hit. That brings up Mark Tian. A.J. Przinski, you look at the size, and you think you're going to get a lot of big power numbers from him, but that has not been the case. Swung on and ripped towards second. Over to second for one. And the deuce, a double play. No runs, one hit, and no one left on base. White Sox four, Royals two. We'll get a look at that leadoff hitter due up here in the inning. And we've got Anderson batting. First pitch on the way. And that swung on and hit. Rios. And that'll set down Anderson. That's one away. And Kendall's in the box. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Burley with a delivery. A shot up the middle. Back up. So Kendall is retired and a chance to check out the schedule for the White Sox. Final game with Kansas City is tomorrow. They stay home for another team series, the Toronto Jays. That series is four games. And they'll have to contend with Denard Spann and a very good lineup for the Minnesota Twins. A team they didn't have too much trouble with in their previous series. And here's Juan Pierre. Had an RBI single his last time to the plate. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. This is in the air, straight away left. And he's there to retire the sun. So Mike Burley gets him one, two, three. Top half of the fourth inning over. Now on to the home half. End of the order. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. Designated hitter. Number 18, Johnny Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. Smash towards the middle. Avilas. Run away. The teams who have been reaching home the most over the past ten, courtesy of State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the A's. Blue Jays third. Fourth, the Angels. And number five, the Indians rounded out. 
Swings, lines this one back up the middle, and it's caught. That play made by Cayespo. And a shot here for Alexi Ramirez, two down. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored, top five. Strike one. Mesh got him to swing 0 and 1. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team. Back up the middle. And it gets down. That's hit number two, making good contact. And that'll bring up Paul Canerco. Well, that's 10 hits right now in this ball game for him. And you know, you're going to have to wonder how much longer the manager's going to stick with this guy. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. I think Ramirez has got to be thinking about moving in this situation. Well, we have a moment, courtesy of State Farm. Let's see who has the league league in hits. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Here's Carlos Quinton with two outs and two on. Leading the MLB in batting average. First pitch to Quinton. Strike one. Mesh got him to swing 0-1. Uh, Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate. Day in and day out. That consistency is critical to their success. That one falls. That should bring Ramirez home. And this rolls all the way to the wall. And Ramirez is home. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Second baseman, number 15, Gordon Beckham. Well, he's having himself a day right here in this one. Two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. And Beckham's in the box. Well, they've definitely got a rhythm going right now. Each player feeding off the other. Now that last hit puts a little bit more daylight in this lead right now, Gary. They keep tacking on early. Strike two. That's strike two. Gil Mesh able to stay ahead in the count. Not a comfortable lead yet, but it's an early statement. Well, it's a statement that says, you know what? We're going to score some runs for our, our guy and putting pressure on the opposition's offense. Ended this inning with a nice piece of pitching work as he gets the K. David DeJesus now to lead it off. One for two in the ballgame. Number nine, David DeJesus. First count on DeJesus. Here it comes. Ground ball headed for the middle. One away. For the Kansas City Wall. First base. And Butler's in the box. And a breakout season for first baseman D.H. Billy Butler of the Kansas City Royals. And if the Royals are to compete, they have to find some help for Butler in the lineup. The 21 homers, 93 RBIs, off to a great start in this young career. And in there, base hit. So that brings up Rick on Keel for Billy Butler. The question is, the pitchers found a way to get him out of there. He is a guy who does not miss his cuts at the plate. No, he doesn't. He is a free swinger. He's going to let it fly. Only 58 walks and 608 at bats. If he's going to if he's going to get pitched to a lot differently now because of his reputation after this 2009 season, he's going to have to be a little more patient at the plate. Good effort there, but he couldn't get into position to make that play. Burley with a delivery. Here's a fly ball to straightaway left. Two retired here. Well, he just got under this one, a left fielder able to make an easy catch. Diaspo at the plate. He singled in his last at bat. Take a look at a couple of these plays from earlier in the game. He is playing some kind of defense out there today, really helping his club. Runner on first, two away. And here's the first one. Line towards first. And that's going to do it. Canerco's there. Some good work, Mark Burley. And it'll be the White Sox. Take a look at the uh, young manager, Trey Hillman. You can kind of tell he's figuring out just what he's going to have to do here to try and overcome that three-run deficit. And Alex Rios up. And one of the top ten averages right now. And it gets through. Not bad. Two for three today. 
Now oh, look at the leaders and extra base hits courtesy of State Farm. That's going to bring up A.J. Pierzynski. Oh, he's having some kind of season this year, Gary. Really the guy leading this team's offense and some kind of offensive production. One of the best batting averages in the league. No one out and a runner on first. And here's the first one. Strike one. Mesh got him to swing 0 and 1. Swung on. It's hit. This one towards Pierre. One down. And it is the month of May for the Royals. One game left to the White Sox. That's tomorrow. They head to yet another venue. The Rangers hosting that one. That's Thursday through Sunday. Then they kick off a series with division rivals the Indians. Hit sharply towards the hole. Too late and he is safe at second. And he gets there in time. Second base. The opportunity for offense is right now. Well the pitcher did everything he could right here. He got the ground ball like he wanted. But you see this runner man once he left the box he is flying and he beats this one out. Swing and a miss but he was right on it 0 and 1. Well, climbing the ladder on him right there. He just throws that fastball right by him up in the zone. Line drive. Courtesy of State Farm, here's the leaderboard for teams with runners in scoring position. Best batter. Number one, the White Sox. Blue Jays in second. Third, the Yankees. Fourth, the Red Sox. And we've got the Twins, who are number five. But Gary's ball club, they have a great approach with runners in scoring position. They don't try to do too much. They let the game come to them. And it is this is in the air, straight away left. That's the second out of the inning. He's got a shot to get out of this now. Big time out. Now he's got two down. He's only one out away from working out of this jam. Alexi Ramirez. Here it comes. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And that's a base hit. Ramirez on board with a single. And Rios comes in. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. Number 14, Paul Canerco. Well, he's having a heck of a day so far. It's his third hit of the game in this one. They just can't seem to find an answer for him. RBI chance goes to Paul Canerco. And they've not had to struggle here at the plate in this game. They just keep building on this lead. You know, after giving up runs like that, this is where the pitcher has to bow his neck and shut down the opponent. Damage control. This is where you uh, begin to wonder whether this game is going to start slipping away. Or not. And the run comes in. And they manage to knock in two runs. A big two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. This man's doing what he has to do to help his team win. So Carlos Quinton comes up here with two runners on. Well, they definitely got a rhythm going right now. Each player feeding off the other. Liner between first and second. And Ramirez is home. Up to the we talk about a guy who's just wearing out the opposition. That's a four hit day for him. He is locked in. And Beckham's in the box. Show no mercy. When the offense is going, you don't give up at bats, and they're not. Now, Gary, they can't seem to do anything to shut down this offense. I mean, they're putting this game out of reach right now. This is uh, called piling on time. I have a feeling here. It's starting to look like this is going to become an insurmountable lead. Oh, won the count right now after he fouled off that first one. Hit sharply towards the hole. They're just teeing off right now. Four straight hits, and clearly this offense is locked in. Two outs. Base is loaded. And the first pitch. Swinging and a miss, and he falls behind on the count 0-1. He's hitting 333 lifetime off the Royal. Here's a swing and a fly ball. It is foul. And Kendall setting his target. 
Rios again fouling it off. Well, the pitcher did exactly what he wanted to do on that 0 2 count. He wanted him to swing the bat, and he did, but he just fouled it off. Great piece of hitting. Well, he was able to ring up that K, and he needed it, and it got him out of the inning. They go to town this half inning. Seven hits, four runs. White Sox continue to run away with this ballgame. Looking ahead, 6 7 8, they're due up. Avilas at the plate. Two for two in the game. Number 30, Mike Avila. Here's the first pitch. That one's lined softly towards the gap left center. And he gets it down. That's his third hit. Three for three. So Alex Gordon will come up. But just what his team needed. He continues to swing a great bat. Three hits from now in this ball game, and he's on with no outs. First pitch on the way to Gordon. Ball. And there's ball one. He went two for six last year against Burrow. And he takes a strike on that fastball. 1-1. One, one. Unless you stay back and really think about going the other way, you've got no chance of hitting that four-seamer down and away. Swinging and a miss, and it's now 1-2. and two. Pitch on the way. Hard grounded to short. It's picked up. That's one out. Over to first, he is safe. Almost a double play, not quite enough time. Well, they get the lead runner at second, but they just couldn't turn two. No, they wanted to. And we've got Anderson batting. One for two in the ball game. And that misses for a ball. Lined right at the second baseman. Two away. We want to make sure you at least get an out in this situation. But the runner is able to advance now in the scoring position. Here's the first pitch. That one's wide as Burley misses. Tried to backdoor that cut fastball, just trying to catch the outside corner. Couldn't quite get it. And he looks at a changeup in there, one and one. What an outstanding pitch. Changing speeds, hitting your spots. Throw that changeup away. Swung on, line softly behind second base. They pick up no runs on one hit and leave a man at second. The White Sox still ahead. Leading it off, A.J. Przinski leads the American League and runs batted in. A.J. Przinski. Here's the pitch. Line shot into center field. And in there for a base hit. He's three for four today. That brings up Mark Tian. One of the offensive leaders in the game this year. And obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense. is somebody they've really come to rely upon. Here's the delivery. A liner headed for the hole. And he gets that one down. His second hit. Two for four today. He goes right with the pitch and slaps the ball in the left field. And if you try and pull that pitch, you're probably not even going to get the bat on it. It's a ground ball to second base if he pulls that one. First pitch on the way to Damon. Swung on, hit this one towards Anderson. One away. Get a break here and a chance to look at the leaders in slugging team wise. Brought to you by State Farm. The White Sox, number one. Second, the Blue Jays. The Red Sox, third. Fourth, the Orioles. And we've got the Twins, who are number five. Now, Gary, this club can. That one swung on, hit in the air to deep right center field. That's the second out. That keeps those runners at first and second. Now, batting for the Chicago White Sox. And a shot here for Alexi Ramirez. Two down. Alexi, a couple of RBIs thus far. And this is why he's so respected around the game. He does it on defense, and then in clutch situations, he'll pick up some RBIs. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch towards center field. And it's in there. He continues to get on base. That's hit number four in this game. And Pierzynski comes in. Well, they just can't figure out a way to get this guy out. That's now four hits for him in this game.
And he starts Canerco out. That's it foul by Canerco. The pitch. Fastball way inside. Nice dance. So pitchers like to throw in off the plate. If it's not a strike, then you want to send a message to the hitter to back up. It allows you to open up the outer third of the plate now. The one-two pitch. Smash towards the hole. And he easily gets second base. And a run comes home. He talks about a guy who's just wearing out the opposition. That's a four hit day for him. He is locked in. First pitch to Quinton. Hit hard to second. It doesn't matter who's on the mound or what they're throwing. These guys can hit it. They are just together building confidence and whacking at it. And Beckham's in the box. Well, I think we're seeing some padding here, although in this game there's no such thing as insurance runs, really. You've got the pitcher on the rope. You have to take advantage of it while he's down. Line drive fouled off towards first. Line fair down the line and right. And uh, Jesus gets there. So they strike for five base hits in the inning and a couple of runs. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. The top of the order is due up next. And it's Juan Pierre now. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Number six, Juan Pierre. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. Called strike on one. Look at with this big a lead here in the seventh inning. It's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes. Get outs right now. Oh and one. Burley kicks and delivers. And he strikes him out. He catches one Pierre just standing there. That's quite a break for having thrown that pitch at 86 miles per hour. Now what a great job of working the hitter down and in to ring him up. Looks like he was actually trying to get him to swing over it, but he gets the call and the out. Fresh count on DeJesus. Here it comes. And Burley gets it by. Called strike of the count will go to 0-1. And, and in 2009 for the Kansas City Royals, David DeJesus was one of the most consistent players on that team. 558 plate appearances. He hit 280, four stolen bases, the 13 home runs. He's a guy that can do a lot of things offensively, but also a good defender. Here's the 1 1. And that one fouled off by DeJesus. For DeJesus, trying to find a place for him in the lineup has been an issue because he clearly can generate some offense, but. Still, teams trying to find a place to put him where he gives them the best out. Well, that's the thing. To me, he's probably best suited to be a second hitter because he has a little bit of speed, he has gap power, and, and he can hit the ball out of the ballpark on occasion. He's the type of guy that if the leadoff hitter gets on, you have to throw him fastballs, he can make you pay. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. Two down. Up to the plate for the Kansas City Royals. First base. Number and 16. Butler's in the box. Two for three thus far. Here's the first pitch. And he takes the ball, 1-0. and oh. Well, it's getting late right now. Two outs here in the seventh inning, and, you know, they're down by a bunch of runs. They need to start to get something going right here, Gary. Burley's pitch taken for a strike, 1-1. One one. Now that he's elevated his eyes, looking for that high fastball, let's see if he goes back down in the zone. Here's the 1-1 one, one. towards the middle. Good defensive half inning there. No hits allowed. Loosen him up. Seventh inning stretch time on the south side. Quick glimpse of the manager, Ozzie Gian. Satisfied manager, I think, right now. He's got the ball club in a pretty good spot. You know, Gary, I think you're losing a little something here. I don't think this guy's nearly as solid defensively as the one he's replacing. So, interesting move. 
probably should not have swung at that one. It's a strike even though the ball was in the dirt. Swung on and ripped towards second. That's going to bring up A.J. Krasinski. We talking about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. The pitch. It's fouled away. And that's a strike. A.J. Pruszynski now behind on the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Well, he clearly fooled him right there. He had him thinking fastball, and he pulled the string on it. Got him a swing right through it. Swing and a miss on that slur. He's out number one. Struck him out on three pitches. That gets it done in a hurry. Well, efficient and in control. When you have those two things working for you, you're going to get it done. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. A swing line to left center. Now it's two down. And he'll have to hold at first. Now up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. Runner on first now for Johnny Davis. Last time up, blew up. Johnny Davis. Swing and a line to left. And Pierre grabs that one, and the side's retired. Save your arm. Leadoff hitter Rick on Keel. Hasn't got to hit yet today. We'll see what he can do here. Rick on Keel. Burley with a delivery. Slider just misses 1-0. Oh. Well, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so th they need a big inning here. They can't wait till the ninth to try to come all the way back. They need to try to do something now. Hit hard on the ground to short. Okay. And that'll retire on Keel. Second baseman. Diaspo at the plate. Well, 2009 with the Royals, Alberto Caiaspo put together a pretty solid season. Consistent hitter, hit 300 for the season. Liner towards the hole. And Conerco makes the catch. You want to talk about settling in? How about retiring eight hitters in a row? I think he settled in. And the first pitch. First pitch, a slider outside, 1-0. Uh, Gary, I think right now that uh, you've got to consider trading outs for runs if if you're pitching. I mean, listen, uh, just keep getting outs right now. You have the countdown's there. You only need four outs left to win this ball game. Two all on the way. Hoping for a free pass that time, but that fastball is in there. Strike one. Well, when you're down by this much, you need a lot of base runners. You need a rally, so you don't have the swing to get on. You could take the walk, so maybe take another pitch right here. Here's a fly ball to straightaway left. And he's there to retire the sun. No runs, no hits, no one left on. The White Sun. And for sudden expanding. You know, they're losing Number a little bit in the defensive department with this change. It may be geared more toward offense. It's just odd to make this move right now. Took something off, and it swung on and missed. 0 and 1. Here's the pitch. That should be a base hit. Now batting. Well, this guy's got a lot of speed over there at first base, and it's not going to be surprised to see him off and running to try to steal this base. And a runner on for Alexei Ramirez. He's four for five in this game. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Fly ball. And a foul ball. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He's in the hole. Two strikes. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it by him. Oh. Ramirez will foul that one away. Throws over to first. Keeps him close at first. Hit. 
hit up the middle. One and two, a double play. Now, Gary, get a chance to look at this double play and the replay, and this is an outstanding effort to make the catch, get to the bag, and make the throw. That's a rally killer. And that's going to deny the chance at a big inning here. Two outs and nobody on. And he starts Canerco out. That's it foul by Canerco. He delivers. Canerco fouls off another. Now swing and a shot toward second. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. So no runs on one hit and nobody left on. The ninth inning is coming up. Alex Gordon leading it off. 0 for 2 thus far. Four. Alex Gordon. First pitch on the way to Gordon. Nope, that one not in there. Burley misses. Well, a non-save situation right here in the ninth inning, and they just want to get outs right now. Try to get the first out of the inning. Take away. Well hit towards the middle. Fielded by Ramirez. That retires Gordon. Uh, just having some difficulty right now trying to make up this ground. And, and obviously they've got a hill still to climb. And running out of time right now, only two outs remaining. So they've got to get something going and keep it going. Good pitch from Burley. Swung on and missed. And here's a swing and a miss, and he falls behind 0-2. Cutter called strike three. He knew it, too. Two down. Big, big breaking ball right there, just sailing in at 84. It comes right up through the top of the zone. I think the batter just got fooled on that one. And he'll be back to the dugout to think that one over. You just can't afford to let pitches like that go by. you got to swing the bat. Burley with a delivery. And he tries to lay off, does, but it's a called strike, nothing and one. That's foul back behind the plate. And a grounder is at the last out. And that'll do it, everybody. That's out number three. This ball game over. But it went a great one here today, Gary, and it's all because of the pitching, outstanding pitching, really leading them to victory. As we check out the highlight reels of our Pepsi Clutch performer, our fantastic display by Mark Burley got it done today. Well, yeah, I agree. Complete games seem to be a dying art, but every now and again, someone tosses a gem like this one. What I like is that even though he wasn't perfect, his manager gave him the chance and showed enough confidence in him that he could get the job done and finish it off, and he did. Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Now, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings, but the hometown fans, they like the offensive explosion and the big win. Thanks for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed 2K Sports Major League Baseball. We wrap it up. I'm Gary Thorne with John Crux, Steve Phillips, and our 2K Sports group. We'll see you soon.